This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. If you'd be so kind, would you just take a listen to these two side-by-side -side clips? And before I tell you the answer to this, would you let me know in the comments which you think is the real amp? Is it device A or device B? One of these is a Katana, the other one is a Mezopugi Mark III. I'd love to know your thoughts without knowing the answer. I will tell you the answer shortly. for this video there's a couple of reasons first of all i saw a video from the studio rats paul if you're watching huge fan of your playing um and they did a video earlier in the week uh just comparing the katana with uh, a matchless independent i believe it's called uh and uh marshall jcm 900 i think and uh their conclusion was that it came pretty close to these things recorded now I can just tell you, if you're wondering what was happening in the introduction there, device A was the Katana, device B was the Mezabugi Mark III. Now the Mark III, obviously an expensive amp, and obviously Mezabugi drives are a little bit different, uh, have some things going on that aren't necessarily super similar to some other drives. The idea here is that I would put the Katana head through this cab. This is loaded with an eminence EV12 Neo kind of uh, copy. Um, so it's supposed to be something like the EVM12, um, but it's a neodymium speaker. And um, essentially what I've done is spent some time trying to dial in something roughly similar, but only using the front panel of the Katana, not using global EQ and not using kind of anything too complicated. Now, between you and me, what I can kind of hear are the differences, and I don't know if you can hear the same, and I'm going to do a full demo now. Maybe what I'd be listening for is what is happening in the low end, and is there any kind of fuzziness to the tone? And those are the things that I've sort of noticed are a bit different. Now, here's kind of a full demo, and I'll come back and kind of give you some thoughts on this, if you don't mind. <laughs> Now, here's a piece of information that I found on Reddit that I think may help you dialing in the Katana if you're interested. Um, now, the models 
that are listed on the front are not assigned to any specific amps. Um, it's kind of supposed to be generic. But apparently the clean is based on a Roland Jazz Chorus. Apparently crunch is based on a Fender Bassman. Uh, apparently lead is based on a PV5150. And apparently brown is based on a Soldano SLO. Now, if I knew that uh, more specifically, I think dialing in the Katana might make a little bit more sense just because you would have some reference in your mind for what this amp is supposed to sound like. So for instance, a Fender Bassman, um, also similar to a Marshall JTM45, I'd have in mind that that would be used for kind of a little bit lower gain tones probably than when I just see crunch there, right? Fender Bassman was the basis for actually uh, a lot of really key amps. So the Marshall JTM45, also um, the Mesa Boogie uh, Mark One, I, I think was based on a Bassman circuit. And also Robin Ford used to use a Tube Screamer with a Bassman. And that was where the tone that inspired the Dumble ODS originally came from, apparently. So that's a little bit of information that might be worth knowing. Now, once you put a Katana through a really decent speaker cabinet, I think you can get some really good results out of it. Now, I wouldn't say, the thing that I'm noticing is that there's less kind of low end heft and less kind of rumble tones. So sort of like 80 to 150 Hertz is what I'm thinking. And there's also then up in the top end, less kind of uh, inconsistency to the tone. So the, the Katana to me sounds a bit more polite now it also sits in the mix perfectly well and some of those low end tones might be the sorts of things that you might kind of take out anyway in the mix. But what I'm thinking is that if you were using the Katana Live, it might comparatively, because of that, that, that sort of relative lack of bass frequencies, sound a little bit smaller, maybe. Um, but I don't think it sounds bad at all and I think recorded it sounds really good. What I will say is that there are things that are happening with the Mesa Boogie Mark III in the room that the microphone doesn't really capture super well. So I think in the room with these amps, you'd probably notice more of a difference than recorded, I think. Again, let me know if that's your experience, but generally I find it a bit difficult to, to fully capture the amp in the room tone with just a microphone in front of an amp. That's kind of tricky to do. Um, so there are probably some subtleties that are lost via recording. I would also say that I think the Katana sounds a lot better than a lot of practice amps that I have played with or had as a kid. I don't know if the Katana is specifically billed as being a practice amp or, you know, it's kind of, what is the Katana? Is it designed for rehearsal rooms? Is it designed for practice? Is it designed for stage? Maybe it's designed for all of those things. The one question I have is why don't we see any kind of um, famous people using them and that's probably a bit of a shallow question to ask but I think it would be the important catalyst to, to turning more people onto them um, because obviously I know about Mesa Boogie because people like Santana, uh, Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, John Petrucci, loads and loads of people have been you know for years marketed as playing Mesa Boogie amplifiers I think that's part of the sex appeal with some of this stuff. Whereas, you know, has a Boss Katana ever made it onto a hit record? I don't know. Uh, presumably, yes. And there's no reason why it couldn't be because I think tonally it kind of, to me, it doesn't sound hugely worse. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Would I replace my tube amp with it? I think possibly for live use, it might be a thing that I consider trying. Um, I've not tried a, a Katana live, um, but I'm, interested to know opinions from folks who have. Hey guys, Beeps here. Quick 30 seconds testimonial for the Katana. No affiliation with Boss. Cordy just knows that I'm a big, big fan of it. I got this back in 2018. Um, I'd been using a Victory big head and cab for some time, got tired of it, and I needed, actually needed an amplifier for an acoustic gig, a duo gig. And this was the cheapest thing that had an acoustic input, it was loud enough, and I got it for that reason. But then also discovered that it sounds flipping amazing, it's just sticking a guitar through it. Um, either as an amp on its own or a pedal platform. This is the Mark I, uh, the Katana Mark I 50, and I got it for 160 pounds in PMT new, which in terms of value for money, I just 
don't think that can could be beat at the time. I'm not sure what they cost now. I know they've gone up a little bit and there's the Mark II, etc. Um, but as as an amplifier for just like playing through all different styles, feeling and sounding like a real amp, it just couldn't be beat. Maybe still can't. Another catalyst that Cordy, the Line 6 catalyst that Cordy's um, demoed on the channel, and I've played up here actually when he brought it up. That's also very good. Um, does has some strengths over the katana maybe, um, but all round, if I had to pick one or the other, I would, I would pick this, um, the Boss Katana every day. Uh, doesn't sound as great direct. I know Cordy's recent video on the head sounded amazing direct out of it. Um, this being a bit older doesn't have, I don't think any emulations or anything coming out the direct. That's not what it's for, for me. It was um, a gigging amp for doing function, wedding type corporate gigs, um, either on its own with the built-in cool effects and the, the, the amp, four amp models are pretty good, or, as I used it most of the time, sticking a pedal board through the front end. Hope that's useful and see you soon, bye. If you have an opinion, if you've tried using one, um, did it make you miserable or did it work for you? Um, Phil, friend of the channel, friend of mine, uh, has a Friedman BE100 that he, um, Friedman Brown, like, that he gigs live and he did use a Katana for one gig with like a pedal platform set up and uh, he didn't have a great amount of fun with that. He said it worked really well in rehearsal, but live, not so much. Uh, I do wonder that, that thing that I'm noticing where there's kind of um, a more polite, less kind of complexity to the tone live, would that be a thing where the katana was more likely to get lost in the mix? I don't know. Um, like having less of that bass frequency stuff. I imagine live, you're gonna feel the guitar a little bit less than say for instance this Mesa Boogie which had quite a lot of that low end frequency admittedly you might even want to cut some of that low frequency I don't know if that's the ideal tone for you or not <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.